Good evening. I'm Mike McKenna, President of Paper Community Services, and I'm here with Shelby Nauman, Interim CEO at Lancaster Housing Opportunity Partnership. We are so thankful to everyone who's been tuning in all day and providing support uh, through your donations and through your sharing of information about this great day of giving. And we wanted to share a little bit more with you as the leaders of the, the combined organization about what makes us tick, why we care so deeply about housing and what we see in, in our future as uh, one strong combined organization. Yeah, so I'm going to kick it off with um, some questions and Mike and I are just going to kind of go back and forth to give you some flavor about sort of both of our backgrounds and the strengths of our teams. So Mike, LHOP's tagline is every, because everyone deserves a place called home. Can you give me sort of what home means to you and why you think everyone deserves a place called home? Home to me is something that's incredibly uh, special and powerful. I am blessed to be the father of two young girls, and I think that has given me such a, a richer appreciation for what home means. It should be a place of safety, a place of love, a place of creativity, a place where you can problem solve together when hard times come, and a place where you can celebrate together where all of the, the good times come. But I also know that that my experience of home isn't necessarily representative of what the home is like for lots of people in our community, people who are struggling financially or perhaps don't have a home who are homeless. And that was something that was brought to my attention at a very young age. My parents brought my sisters and I to St. Columbus Shelter in West Philadelphia to volunteer. And we helped serve meals to the men who lived there. And uh, we continued to have different kinds of experiences throughout childhood uh, related to Christian service and to understanding that you know, to whom much is given, much is expected. And when I was in college, I did a lot of work on the U.S.-Mexico border and worked with a number of, of migrants who were homeless and were uh, staying at a shelter in, in Tijuana. And that really helped me think about home in a different way. The idea of leaving one's home, leaving one's country to try to find a better life. Also losing the home in, uh, in the new country and having the experience of homelessness and hardship there. And I realized there's a lot of inequality out there and that we needed to be committed to, to both direct action, service to others, uh, but also working to create the conditions of justice that we're striving for. So that's where some of the policy change comes in and helping you know, work on designing a system that works for everybody. It's why I love Lancaster County, because we're so collaborative. We work on the systems, you know, we have the Lanco My Home, the Homelessness Coalition, we have the Coalition for Sustainable Housing, we have uh, our eviction prevention network that, that LHOP and Tabor have been working on for some time. We, we are working together both on meeting the direct need of people whose experience of home has been challenging, uh, but who aspire to a place of home that is safe, that is affordable, um, and we're also working on some of those policy conditions to make sure that this change that we're seeking will last. What is it about everyone deserves a place called home that really resonates with you, Shelby? Well, I worked in community development for 15 years, so I had a front seat to Lancaster's revitalization. You know, there was a time in the 90s when there was an, am an, an amazing amount of people leaving the city, and we've seen a resurgence recently. Um, I was part of, you know, kind of bringing back the downtown area, and that was such a thrilling experience to be part of. But I started to see myself being more interested in working with our social service partners to make sure that as Lancaster was being revitalized, it felt like a place for everyone, you know, people with deep roots here, um, that it, you know, it stayed uh, accessible for everyone. And so one of the books that I read um, was Evicted by Matthew Desmond. Great and it's just, yeah awesome book. Um, I know he was here a couple years ago, but it was my daughter's birthday, so I wasn't able to hear him speak in I person. I got to see it. It was really good, but <laughs> yeah. happy birthday. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, when you, that book is amazing because it, he walks you through different people's lived experiences, and, and at the end, you know, he lays out a lot of different metrics about 
when you're homeless, like what that cost looks like, you know, you're more likely, you know, to have sexual abuse issues. You're more likely to have lasting financial issues because of the lack of stability. You're not going to do as well in school because you're constantly moving around. So, I mean, I think we share the fact that we feel like housing is a human right. And it's, it's really so important to have that stability so you can really flourish in all other parts of your life. Yeah. So, I've it's been literally through. the foundation of all of these other things that we are striving for, for a healthy community. All right. Well, moving on, um, yeah. let's talk a little bit about the merger. We'll talk about, you know, what were the crucial conversations that were had and sort of how did, how did this come up for two organizations? Tabor's 50 years old. LHOP is 25 years old. You know, how do two strong and robust organizations make the decision that they'd be stronger together? I think it started with strategic planning. It was really fortuitous. We were both working on strategic plans around the same time. We were talking to a lot of our friends and partners in the community as part of that process. And there was a recurring theme that kind of emerged of like, how well do you work with LHOP or on your side? How well do you work with Tabor? And I think we, the answer was we do work well together. We have worked well together. There was a recognition in that process that we probably could do a lot more together and the unique thing as we really dug into it is we weren't duplicating the work we weren't really overlapping we were complementing we were kind of filling in different pieces of the puzzle but if you could pull that whole puzzle together it could do a lot more for the community what were some of the the key moments you, you think of as we worked through that that quite lengthy and detailed process that really made it seem like yes this is the right thing I think it was the leadership from both of our boards of directors and the, just the right people at the right time being open to having those discussions. Because like you, I think we were a little bewildered at the fact that there really weren't duplications, even though we're both uh, working with a lot of the same clients just at different points in the continuum. So I think what was just so crucial was having that leadership at the board level. And I, I'm so thankful for, for them, you know. Yeah. Rick Jackson, my board chair, and the whole executive team, Joe Laskowitz and your executive team, just helping us shepherd through those discussions. Yeah. Because it's, it's hard. It's hard to have discussions about, you know, maybe letting go of some things and, you know, building together on other things. And um, those aren't easy discussions to have. Right. So. And I think one of the things that was clear for me in the process is we are not losing any of the programs that have made each of the organizations special. We're, we're combining and those programs will all continue to operate in much the same way they always have, but maybe with some newfound efficiencies. So for people who have had a positive experience with one of those programs as a client or somebody who's invested in one of those programs as a supporter, that program will still continue to have great impact in the community after the merger is official. But we also now, will now be able to see where there's some gaps are and maybe some new things that we can do. And I think it was that energy of, of recognizing that we're preserving the good and we're building on something even better that really came together on February 27th when both boards had that, that final meeting and we had two unanimous votes in support of this. And it was like, yes, with all of these talented folks on our respective boards feeling that this was the right thing, I think for me that was like, this is going to do really positive things for the community as a whole. Our board see it, our team see it, and we, we want to share that story with the community too and make sure that we, we live up to those expectations. So we ask people to hold us accountable <laughs> in the years ahead to make sure we do, we do deliver on that promise. Absolutely. I think one of the things we also want to talk about because, you know, we're doing this online versus our in-person events that we normally have because of COVID, you know, how, let's talk about the ways that COVID has changed the ways, you know, the way we do our work, the way we see our work. I know I feel even more passionate than ever. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. I think the, one of the things that really kind of struck a chord with me was the language around the, the stay-at-home order. Completely uh, acknowledge the appropriateness of the order from a public health standpoint, but from a sort of language standpoint, obviously there's some people who don't have homes, so it, it makes it hard. And certainly the Wolf administration did exempt people experiencing homelessness uh, from that. 
but it, it was a stark reminder that we have some folks who've kind of been been left behind even with the the economic recovery we had seen since the great recession before covid and now we know that the number of people affected by the recession because of covid has dwarfed even what we saw back in 2008, 2009, 2010. And we don't yet know how long it's gonna last. So we had some urgency around our work back in February and March of, we still had a housing crisis in Lancaster County that needed to be addressed, both on the supply side of affordable housing units and then on the demand side, making sure that people could find affordable housing, could be successful in affordable housing, had the incomes to maintain that housing. So we already had kind of our, our work laid out for us before COVID. Now we have to, to do that with the newfound need. I think the team has really gelled though in a really amazing way. I have felt like we've already started acting like one team in our response to COVID. The work that we did around the uh, navigating COVID-19 resource guide. Yeah. We had subject matter experts from LHOP and subject matter experts from Tabor just sitting down, hashing it out. I think it came together, you know, it's not actually a printout of it here from another meeting, but you know, this was from idea to it going live on our website and in, in print form probably about a week. It really was quick and it's been updated every week and uh, some folks on your team have organized webinars and likewise on ours, we're responding to new questions we're getting from the community to make sure that's reflected in the guide, making sure, you know, new information that's coming out from government agencies is in there so that it's a useful document and a living and breathing document. The other way that I think we really responded and this will be an ongoing response because we know the need will be there for some time is the work that the eviction prevention network is doing and maybe you can speak a little bit more about that yeah so we had uh, the eviction prevention network which was first funded about two years ago with the goal of working with folks that you know just needed a little bit of short-term help but overall were sustainable because we know keeping people in their housing is much less traumatic for them but even as in terms of the cost to the community uh rehousing someone can be very very expensive you know we've we rolled that out with a handful of partners two years ago that partnership is very strong but we're now looking in terms of COVID at relaxing some of the requirements so we can help more people, people that uh, if not for COVID and not for sort of a short-term loss of income um, would be, you know, on their own sort of being able to, to make ends meet. But because of COVID and when their unemployment runs out and things like that, you know, making it flexible enough and including more partners in the in the partnership that can help bring people to the table that really need those resources uh, to keep them housed so again you know we started those conversations as soon as we knew funding was going to be available and that's moved really quickly we've also really maintained our commitment to responding to people who are are living on the street so andrea our outreach worker she's been out there every day the homeless services team has been making sure that for folks who are homeless who get COVID or are su suspected to have COVID, we have a quarantine hotel that was arranged with our, our friends at, at Lanka My Home and Water Street Ministry Missions. And we really have made sure that any end of, of the housing continuum, the work continues. It may look a little different. I know some of your loan officers at LHOP continue to process loan applications for first time home buyers. So even though the market has changed a little bit, we're finding new ways to, to meet people where they are. Some of our housing locators still doing lease signings, maybe virtually or maybe a socially distant inspection and lease signing, but the work continues. And that's the thing that's important. And that's what I'm excited about for this team is we're showing up and we're getting the work done. Yeah, I think COVID's been a real rallying point and an opportunity for our teams to start working more closely together. It's been very positive. I agree with you. I feel like we've aligned as if we're already a, one team, which is awesome. I think one of the last questions we wanted to talk about is, you know, what we think is possible for the community that wasn't possible before with 
this merger? And I know you touched on it a little bit in talking about better being able to identify gaps and maybe where we could bring new resources to the table. Any Anything else you want to touch on? Yeah, I think the uh, being a go-to resource for all education topics related to housing and, and financial challenges. So the work that was happening around fair housing and the home buyer program at LHOP and the financial education workshops and some of the landlord outreach that was happening with both agencies. Now we'll be able to pull that all together and have sort of one educational resource hub for landlords, for tenants, for prospective home buyers, for current homeowners, really just helping people get answers to those questions with reputable people who have credentials in the field and who aren't trying to, to, you know, make any money off those individuals, just trying to make sure the information is out there. And of course, referring to other specialists as people need that help. We're looking right now with some of the gaps that existed between say where the eviction prevention network ended and where the homeless services system began there was a gap there. So folks who had already lost whatever housing they had, but maybe still have some resources so they don't qualify yet for the federal government's definition of homelessness. Maybe they're living in a hotel, maybe they're doubled up. You know, how do we look at some of the supports and the the tools that we already have between Tabor and LHOP and deploy those in a way that helps those folks get back on a trajectory towards permanent housing without necessarily having to go down that the path of seeking supports from the homeless services system. So that's one area where we, we are already seeing a gap. We've already been getting calls from folks who lost housing before COVID, couldn't find new housing because of COVID, and now their their savings is depleted, maybe they're in a hotel. And now we're gonna be in a position with the COVID relief effort, eviction prevention network, to support those folks in the short run, but also have a direct warm handoff to the the homelessness system too if needed so there will be faint you know be a bridge very soon there and i think that just kind of gives the example of when we see the gap how do we collaboratively design a response to that gap and make sure that we're able to to meet them in an ongoing way as the needs keep changing. Yeah, and I see, you know, our home buyer program is probably one of the programs we're best known for in the community. We've worked with over 2,000 people in Lancaster County to purchase their first home. And a lot of folks that we see when they first come to us are not ready. You know, they're, they need to work on their credit and things like that. So we do always send them to Tabor because you know, we've been working in partnership in that way. But I think once we're together, being able to track those folks a little bit and keep, you know, dripping on the rock to make sure that they're following through, because if, if that's really what they want to do, but they haven't come from a long line of folks who have owned their own home or had that kind of financial stability, sometimes you do just need a little extra push. So I think that's what I'm most excited for and see a huge opportunity to really make more families in our community financially stable. Yes, I love that goal. And we have folks who've gone through homelessness, you know, folks who've lived at TLC, who later became homeowners with the support of, of LHOP and Tabor combined. And so this idea of moving people from homelessness to home ownership isn't unattainable. That is a pathway. And it's not necessarily the, the right path for everybody. I'm not trying to say that it is. But when we have that full range of services under one roof, that kind of a journey is one that we should be able to, to replicate more and more often in a way that really does uh, empower people to financial security. So that's that's when I look in the crystal ball in the future, that's what I'm seeing and, and I'm really energized by that. So we wanted to just close with a thank you. The support of donors like you is really the glue that ties all of our programs together. So between Tabor and LHOP, we're blessed with a lot of different funding sources and we need the, the gifts like yours that helps fill in those gaps and cover the cost for all the things that make our programs really special and unique. So we will continue to be a good steward of your resources and please accept a heartfelt thank you from me and from from Shelby and from the rest of our teams. Thanks for everything you're doing and we hope you all stay safe. We're here for you during this difficult time. Thanks.